So I'm here with the new Gaz Trackmaster from Australian Adventure Vehicles and we're going to go over it in detail, take a look at the specifications, take it for a bit of a drive and see how it performs. Now Gaz isn't as familiar a name as say Land Rover, Jeep or Toyota, but in fact they're one of Russia's largest automobile manufacturers ever since 1929 when they were assembling Ford Model A's. Over the years they've produced things like cars, tanks, hovercraft, amphibians and half tracks, but today they mostly focus on commercials, trucks, buses, the like, and also the medium duty Sadco Next four wheel drive truck. The Sadco has been around since 1997 and it's been designed from the ground up as an off-road vehicle. It's in use with several different militaries around the world and it's also been raced. The current version is the Sadco Next and that comes with twin cross axle lockers, 42 inch tyres with a central tyre inflation system and single or dual cabs. The Australian version of the Sadco Next is the Trackmaster imported by Australian Adventure Vehicles. What you see here is the single cab, although the dual cab will be offered. It weighs about 3.8 tonnes and that tray on the back you see is about 800 kilograms. The engine is a 110 kilowatt diesel with 419 newton metres and, and uh, Australian adventure vehicles are looking at a possible remap. Extra cooling has been added for hotter Australian conditions and all changes are fully backed by the gas factory and that includes use of LED headlights. Wading depth is 1.2 metres, a snorkel is standard and so will be front and rear recovery points. There's live axles front and rear with leaf springs and the front springs are parabolic for a smoother ride. Behind both of the axles you'll find a lot of the brake lines etc and that's done to keep them out of harm's way. Unlike most other light trucks in this market, the cab is actually slightly behind the front axle, so that has the advantage of a better ride and you don't need to tilt the cab forwards to get to the engine, but it does shorten the tray length. There's two 90 litre fuel tanks, one on either side. To switch between them you use this lever in the centre of the console, then switch the gauge to show either the left or right tanks, and there's plenty of room for additional tanks if you need more diesel. Here's the fuel filter which is easily accessible and it also filters out water. This truck runs 24 volts but future vehicles will run 12 volts. I do like the way you can stand on the bumper to access the engine, we'll just use it as a form of table. The vehicle does have a power takeoff feature for a PTO winch but AOV are planning on fitting a high performance electric winch instead. The cabin and the single cab uh, will seat three people. The driver has a, an adjustable steering wheel and suspension seats and the seat is even heated. The Trackmaster has an exhaust brake for towing as well as cruise control and for infotainment it has a screen mirroring system for Android and Apple and that's how the navigation works and it has Bluetooth for music and phone calls. The switchgear is exactly what you'd expect to find in any European car and there's even some controls on the steering wheel for the sound system. There's a couple of glove compartments, one there, one at the top and there's even a Sunnies holder. Obviously they have to have your coffee cup or drinks bottle holders and some would say this is for vodka but we found it actually works quite well for phones. And because it's an off-road truck it's got to have the Jesus bars as well. If you're looking to travel internationally, yes, the Sadco does fit in a standard container. So here's the differences between the single and the dual cab track masters. Now the interesting thing is what's the same, and that is the distance from the back of the cab to the end of the chassis. It's the same for the single as for the dual. So dimensions wise, whatever you can put on the back of a single cab will actually fit on the back of a dual cab. Now, not necessarily from a weight perspective because as we'll see the dual cab has got a lower payload. Now the difference in wheelbase 3.8 meters versus a pretty long 4.5 so quite a, quite a difference there so really that's just got an extended chassis and then those extra extra doors. Now you can put three people in the single cab in the dual you can put three in the front four in the back or you can convert the rear seat to a bed. Now specs wise um, this vehicle as you see it here weighs around 3.8 tons you add a tray on to that typically around another 800 kilos but a base weight 3.8 tons GVM is 6850 um, and that gives you a payload of just over three tons now um, 
AAV are looking at doing a GVM upgrade on this to um, 7300. The sum of the front and rear axles is 7400, so 100 kilograms worth of leeway there. Now the same numbers for the dual cab, um, that's a bit longer, 7 metres, that's to the end of the uh, chassis there. Um, 7 seater, it's got a bunk. Now the tear weight goes up to 4200, but because the GVM's the same, 6850, that eats into your payload, so the payload's only 2650 kilograms for the dual cab, still quite a bit. I think the Gaz has the tallest tyres of any off-road vehicle in Australia, that's a 12 by 18 there, coming out to a total of 42 inches. They are directional as you can see there and as you can also imagine they're really strongly constructed. This is the CTI or Central Tyre Inflation System which allows you to adjust the air pressure from inside the cab and that's what it looks like when the vehicle is rolling. To adjust pressures, just use these two buttons, one for the front axle, one for the rear axle, to lower or raise the pressures. Here's the dash display so you can see what's happening with the tyre pressures. Displays it in a bar for the front and rear axles and also in kilograms per square centimetre. Now we're going to show the central tyre inflation system going from an off-road pressure of 20 to one of the on-road pressures of 80 psi and you can see that takes 8 minutes. And there's the contact patch at 80 psi and now we're going to go back down the other way from 80 to 20 and remember you do all of this as the vehicle is moving. So there's the difference, 26% more contact patch area which is actually about half the percentage that you'd expect from a normal four-wheel drive tyre and I think that's probably something to do with the sort of uh, strength of construction of these big tyres. Now you can disable the CTI system using this tool and once you've done that then you can also manually inflate or deflate the tyres using this air inlet there. You can connect air tools or air compressors whatever else you want to this air tank. Now this is a 37 inch tyre compared to the standard 42. I did ask if they had any 31 inch tyres for comparison but they said no we don't deal with such tiny microscopic tyre sizes. So to drive the Gaz Trackmaster it's pretty much like your normal average everyday car. You just put the clutch down, um, start the engine by turning the key and off you go, ready to drive. Perhaps the only difference is there's an air brake here, comes on and off like that, then you're ready to roll. Despite its size, the Trackmaster is easy to drive. The seating position isn't quite car-like, but it's still better than most trucks. The steering itself is quite light and easy. The 5-speed manual gearbox is a little bit notchy and you've got to take your time with it, but it's easy enough to use and visibility is all round fantastic. I didn't do any high-speed stopping, but the ABS-based brakes felt good and the vehicles passed all ADR brake tests. Now as you see it, the Trackmaster weighs 4.5 tonnes plus an extra tonne of water on the tray and there's only 110 kilowatts to move all of that weight so it's never going to be that fast. Top speed of cruising is around about 95 kilometres an hour. So into low range now and to do that like with most four-wheel drives you've got to stop the vehicle, set low range and move off. This was not a hard test for the gas, as you can see it didn't even really run out of axle flex and all you had to do is pretty much just leave it in second low and let it idle through those ruts.
The Trackmaster has front and rear cross axle differential locks. Here we've put the vehicle into two wheel drive so you can see the rear locker in action. It's a mechanical locker and it is purely automatic in device, there's no manual control and the exact type is a cam lock pull device. Now these lockers were known for being very high wear but Gaz have actually got a patent out to actually make them uh, last quite a bit longer than is normally the case. So let's compare the Trackmaster to some other vehicles then. So here we've got a Ford Ranger um, PX and that's the single cab cab chassis version. I've drawn lines here so you can see the relative lengths. Uh, that's 5.5 metres long. The popular Canter is about 5.9 metres long. And then we've got the Isuzu NPS 75 1.0. 155 just a fraction longer again and then we've got the Trackmaster at uh, 6.3 and I've drawn all of these to scale. Now I should say that the Canter and the Isuzu both require modifications to go off road typically you'd fit 37 inch tyres, the super single, the suspension etc whereas the Trackmaster doesn't. These diagrams don't reflect that 37 inch um, tyre tire change. Now, what can you fit in the back? Well, with a single cab Ranger, that's 2.3 metres. Um, you can put there, that's to the end of the chassis. Obviously, you typically have a bit of an overhang there, but just measure it to the end of the chassis. With the Canter, 4.3 metres, the Isuzu, 4.4, and then the Trackmaster, 3.6. And the Trackmaster's less because that cab is moved back behind the rear axle, allowing access to the engine without tipping the cab, but also slightly improved ride. Disadvantage, less load space in the back. Okay, so a few more specs then. Um, the most powerful out of this lot is the Ranger. One thing you learn about these vehicles is they are not fast. So that's actually got 147 kilowatts, 1300 kilogram of payload. And um, also note that all of these weights are a little bit approximate depending on exactly how things are configured there as well. Um, the Canter, less power, considerably more weight and um, obviously only a 5 speed gearbox in, in the Canter whereas the range is a 6 speed whether it's auto or manual and 10 speed if you've got the bi turbo um, but can, can carry a lot more, 3.7 tonnes nearly and the Isuzu can carry even more, got about the same sort of power and the Trackmaster is the heaviest but can carry the least out of the trucks there and it's also got the smallest tray but again it is designed for off-roading so it's kind of a Similar to, but a different class to, to the Canter and the Fuso. So let's look at the width now. Now this is important because width is really what's going to stop you going down four-wheel drive tracks as opposed to so much length. Lengths are pain in the backside you can often deal with that, width not so much. So the Ranger is 1.9 metres, the Canter is 2 metres, just a fraction wider down. Again that's shown with double tyres on the rear as opposed to the singles you'd normally fit. The NPS is just a fraction wider um, than the canter and the track master is significantly wider again 2.3 meters so it's it's not going to fit places where you'd be able to take a ranger width as well as height now a few more specs um that the ranger can allegedly tow 3500 kilograms i wrote the first two article on this years and years ago so take that with a pinch of salt all of these can tow 3500 and they do a lot better job of towing it. They're slower, but because they've got a longer wheelbase and they're heavier, um, then they control the heavy trailers so much better. Um, the Trackmaster can only tow 2650 at the moment, although that may be um, uprated. So here's a Toyota Land Cruiser 70 series for a size comparison. At the end of this video, I've got a specification comparison with the Gaz against a few other vehicles. Now we ran both the 70 series and also brand new D-Max through the same course. Both vehicles handled it, the course wasn't the, obviously the toughest you could, you could think of. But you can see here that there is a fair bit more wheel lift and wheel spin compared to the Trackmaster. And uh, it's impressive that the Trackmaster pretty much managed to keep all four wheels on the ground. Also of note is that the course was designed for the Trackmaster and its longer wheelbase. So the Utes actually had a slight advantage because they didn't necessarily have diagonal wheels in the holes as often as the Trackmaster did. All three vehicles have run over the course at road pressures. 
Now here you see the D-Max getting bogged. Um, it's, I would have thought the brake traction control could have pulled it out, but no matter, it didn't manage to do that. It's going nowhere. So what we did was engage the rear cross axle differential lock and out the vehicle came. Obviously the road tyres not doing it any favours in these conditions compared to the off-road tyres fitted to the gas and the all-terrains on the 70. Now you see there's a lot of flexing of the chassis and also the trays, the vehicle moves over rough grounds. That is how larger trucks are designed to work off-road. But it actually causes a problem when you've got something like a motorhome which you don't want to flex otherwise it will bend. So what you do is you create something called a kinetic subframe which allows the motorhome part of the vehicle to remain level whereas the chassis and everything can flex underneath it. So let's take a look at the Trackmaster versus two of the most popular vehicles in the light truck class, the Canter and the NPS. So the Trackmaster, it's designed from off-road right from the start. Now, both of these are very capable off-road. I've got videos of both of them off-road on my channel, but you do need to modify them to get there because they're kind of designed as an all-wheel drive type vehicle to get into sites in and out as opposed to pure off-road, whereas the Trackmaster is right from the start off-roading. Um, you don't need any modifications. You don't need to extra um, tyres to it whatever else it's all there right out of the box and it's got that um, it's not a cab over design which again has got pros and cons the length of the tray versus the ride and the engine access now with the NPS and the Canter well they are smaller and therefore they're more track friendly so that's a huge bonus right there um, and a longer tray length so if you want a motorhome or something then, then there's better options there because you just simply got more space to play with because they've got that cab over design um, and they've got a greater pay payload and towing capacity and part of the reason you go to a vehicle like this is to get that extra payload and these trucks have definitely got it in spades there. Both of them have got airbags, the Trackmaster's got no airbags at all um, and you can derate both of these for a car license whereas this one is really too heavy to realistically um, derate it. Now there is also the Iveco Daily which is kind of a mix between the two. It actually does have 37 inch tyres, it's twin locked um, and it's got really capable off-road. There are question marks around its reliability though but that is another vehicle to consider. So thanks for watching, really hope you enjoyed this video. Planning to do a bit more of a drive with more of these vehicles in the not too distant future, so stay tuned um, and I uh, hope to see you in the comments. Thanks, bye.